Welcome back to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. Today we're going to take a look at the brand new for 2019 Gibson SG Modern. We're going to learn the history, my first impressions, hear a playing demo, and then see if I would finally recommend this guitar. So let's go ahead and dive into that history. The SG body shape, it was introduced in 1961. It was still called a Les Paul for a few years, but hey, it's the shape we're talking about here. And since its introduction, it has never been out of production. So since 1961 all the way through 2019 now, the SG has evolved from its earlier ages where it had a bunch of different vibrola systems on it. They went from a single wing pick guard to a bat wing style. And in the 70s, they did the top route system. And then they eventually went to something a little bit more standardized. And the SGs just kept evolving. And there's so many different iterations out there. It doesn't matter if you don't like an SG, I bet you can find one iteration that you do like. In 2019, Gibson has decided to honor that with an original collection series that offers the Sideways Vibrola, as well as the Maestro Vibrola system, which I have done reviews on. But in my opinion, no, they don't cut the cake. There's nothing different between them and the originals. I could not keep them in tune. So I eventually ended up with this, the SG Modern. This is based off of the old High Performance series. It has completely replaced that branding. And that was such a fantastic move by Gibson because there's so many purists out there that just developed a hatred for the branding HP because it meant a guitar that had non-traditional features that were meant to be high performance, hence the name, right? So by rebranding these as modern, it made me curious about them. I wanted to learn more. And let me tell you, between the old HP 2019 SG and the SG Modern, there are a ton of changes that most people don't even recognize. You still have a mahogany body and a mahogany neck. You still have the AA flamed maple top. Yes, that's right, a maple top on an SG. It kind of blew my mind when I realized it too. A gloss nitro finish, 24 frets, beautiful locking Grover tuners and still offered in the same two finishes, Ebony Fade and Blueberry Fade. And Fade just means that it kind of just falls out the bottom here. You don't have the complete black border. But now for the huge list of things that are different. First off, the original HP series offered a slim taper neck profile. Gibson is still advertising this as a slim tapered neck profile, but new for the modern is Gibson's asymmetrical neck profile. That means it's fatter on one side of the neck and thinner on the other, which makes it easier for soloing. Something else that makes it easier for soloing is they have introduced a compound radius to this series. So that means up here where you're playing chords, the radius is more rounded. However, as you go up the neck, the curvature of the fretboard flattens out. It's not quite as steep, which is supposed to make bending and soloing also easier. And while we're talking about the fretboard here, they have completely ditched rich light. This is now back to traditional ebony wood. Now you can see this example has some streaks in it, so that tells you it's real stuff. And that is a huge thing to traditionalists this year, the return of ebony. It seems we just keep talking about the fretboard, eh? They changed the fret size on this. You used to have low cryogenically treated frets. They've now just swapped them out for regular medium jumbos. So that's a big difference. This whole guitar changed the most in the area that you feel the most. So really, an SG Modern is nothing like the old HP series despite looking the same. Furthermore, they ditched the whole wider neck thing. They gave it a graph tech nut, which is supposed to measure around 1.695 inches. Instead of the old titanium one that had the wider 1.745 inch neck, they ditched some of the blingy chrome hardware on here. Like you no longer have the knurled switch tip and they took off those little plates from the pickup rings. So it looks a little bit more traditional in that sense. Another small factory specification, instead of coming stock with nine gauge strings, you have 10 gauge on these. The other thing that made me really excited and wanting to try one of these is there was a huge price cut. These went from $24.99 down $500 to $19.99. This puts this instrument at the exact same price as the original collection Vibrola SGs. 
So if you're looking just for a great guitar that has fantastic tuning stability, I would highly suggest checking one of these out before trying one of the others. It might not have that classy vintage look to it, but man, this guitar can play. But now for a few things that they changed, which I'm a little bit sad about. We no longer get a fancy case with these guys. It's just the regular old Gibson case. I really like that new teardrop shape HP case they came out with. It's a little bit sad that that's gone away, but I guess I can understand, especially if it keeps the price point down, right? And the other thing they changed is it still has two coil splitting pots here. It's a push-pull system, but they no longer feature that whole dip switch, so you can't choose between a coil split and a coil tap. I never really got to play around with one of those dip switches. Maybe one day I'll get one to review. So you lost some tonal diversity in the new modern series, but I don't think many people were that keen to flipping around with that thing. So the main thing to take away from all of this is the SG Modern, as compared to an HP series, they no longer have that wide neck, they don't have the weird nut, they no longer have any type of robot tuner or anything like that. A traditionalist can pick this instrument up and not feel alienated. It might have modern appointments to it, but it's not so crazy and out there that people will hate this guitar. And for that, I think Gibson has knocked it out of the park. So now that we have that history out of the way, what were my first impressions of this instrument? I actually went to Sweetwater to try this one out and I picked it up at the front desk. I took it over to their little booth where you do your sound demos. It's all closed off, it's nice, it's just you. And I went to plug this thing in and then I went, Oh, the output jack. It's on the side. <laughs> and I instantly fell in love with this thing. That's the whole reason why I like 80s SGs is the output jack was on the side. Now, usually when an SG has this feature, the body is slightly thicker. Now, at that time, I didn't have calipers on me to go measure all these guitars, but later on, I measured my SG Special to be 1.33 inches, where this was a 1.41. So it does have a slightly thicker body to it. Due to that, as you're sitting and playing this thing, as a Les Paul player anyways, for some reason, it just feels better than any SG ever has. Sometimes you'll pick up an SG and be like, oh, is it gonna snap at the neck joint? It just feels weak. This slightly thicker body fixes all of that, but yet still feels like an SG. So it was really eye-opening in that aspect. Before going into the store, I was doing some reading on the specs and I was very confused that the Sweetwater website says these have modern weight relief. Why would you weight relief an SG? They're already neck heavy. And yes, this thing dive bombs like crazy. So if you hate neck heavy guitars, just pass on these or maybe try out a particularly heavy example. Other ways to get around that, you can install a ridiculously heavy tailpiece or attach a weight to the end of your strap, get a super gripping strap. They tried to fix this whole neck divey situation by moving the strap button from its traditional location here to right here. Personally, it, it doesn't do much for the guitar though. However, Gibson's official website does not mention weight relief, so I'm not sure if that's an incorrect spec on Sweetwater's site or it's just not on Gibson's site. So any clarification would be nice, thank you. But after thinking through that in my head, I really wanted to see how thick is this maple top? So here's the side profile view. There's a reason why the back of these are black. It's so you cannot see that seam line. So if you were worried about that, as of now, when they're brand new, you can't see it. Maybe in five or six years, the line will start to show, but as of right now, you cannot see that seam line. So I am definitely excited to rip this thing apart to see if we can see it in the neck pickup or bridge pickup cavities. So after that whole thought process, I plugged this thing in and oh, it's beautiful. It was such a breath of fresh air after those Vibrola SGs to not have to retune after every strum. I mean, this thing, it's got locking Grover tuners. It's a stop bar tailpiece. It's gonna stay in tune as long as it's set up properly, right? And it was at that point when I was like, yep, I'm gonna take this one home. Yep. This one's a keeper. It's a good one. And after I was pleased by its tone and how it stayed in tune, I decided to you know, take a quicker look at the quality control. 
I'll be honest, this was a demo model. I got a very slight discount on this one because there's like a factory smudge in the finish back here. It's right here. No matter what you do, that will not polish out. I'm not sure how that happens, but it's kind of a not a big deal to me, so I still was able to purchase it. But what I care about is the binding. The modern series does not get fret nib. Similar to the HPs, they also get these mother of pearl inlays, which look awesome instead of the acrylic stuff. But we'll get a closer look at this on the bench, but I did not see, you know, hardly any of that chewing stuff. My modern Les Paul, let's face it, that thing is pretty gnarly looking. They did not do a good job on those frets, but this one, beautiful beautiful example. I mean, we've got a little bit of stuff to talk about, but for the most part, this was definitely in the acceptable range to me. So at that point, I was really questioning, is this the best SG Gibson has ever made? Let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench and take a detailed look at all of its individual parts and see how it was constructed. We'll start by taking a look at these pickups here. These are coming stock with the Burst Bucker Rhythm Pro and then the Lead Pro Plus in the bridge. And the readings within the circuit, the bridge pickup I am getting about an 8.43, the neck pickup reads 7.55, and just for fun, the middle is about 3.99. In the neck pickup cavities, it does appear that the SG Modern gets a longer neck tenon. And in the bridge pickup cavity, it says SG Moo. Now that 00, zero I believe is referring to the no model year system since it used to say something like 18 referring to a 2018 model. Some people in the Les Paul Modern were thinking that's just bad penmanship and it's supposed to be SG Mod for Modern, but that doesn't work because all the other new 2019s that I've reviewed have that same double zero, so it's SG Modern 00. zero. There's a lot of dull router bit evidence on this example. I'm not necessarily thrilled with it in that aspect. Th this one's pretty bad right here. But, I mean, does it really matter? No, but I do want you to be aware of the attention to detail. But now the big question, how thick is this maple top? Is it just a tiny veneer laid over top or is it the real deal? I'm happy to say it's a really thick maple top. You can see that the mahogany ends right here. So this whole thing is just a big slab of maple. So from a side profile view, it really does join at the mahogany body about halfway right here. So it's a little bit under an inch thick. So overall, I'm pretty happy with what we found in here. Super thick cap and a long neck tenon. Moving on, the bridge is lightweight and Nashville in style. You have the API branding on it. And this one also utilizes the Allen key adjustments for the posts. So what that means for you is you can take an Allen key, you can use the Gibson multi-tool that they give you or something like this to adjust the action just like this under string tension. That's a beautiful design and much better than the metric style that uses the flathead screwdrivers. These won't slip. Almost kind of looks like a little whammy bar. The tailpiece on these guys are also lightweight aluminum by advanced plating. However, I almost think these lightweight tailpieces and bridges on the SG Modern are a bad thing. If you replace these with full weight ones, that would kind of help fight that whole neck dive situation. Due to the flame maple top on these guys, they do not install a pick guard. That's something else that kind of makes them look modern. And you have your control layout down here. So these two, they do coil split but the toe knobs do not do anything, unlike the Les Paul Modern. And here's your three-way toggle switch with a black switch tip this time. And as we were talking about earlier, you get a side output jack with a metal jack plate. So again, maple top, mahogany back, can you really call it a top if it's half the guitar? I don't know, it's kind of just a sandwich. But here is the ebony fretboard after conditioning it. You can really see these mother of pearl inlays come to life here. They're not acrylic like the original series. But then again, Les Paul standards and stuff, they never actually had true mother of pearl inlays, so that's kind of a modern feature. Now, there's very minimal tooling marks on this one, so I can't really knock them much for that. But there is kind of a huge glaring flaw right here once we get all the way up here. There's two giant dents in my fretboard. I'm not sure if this was caused after the factory, but this was not really disclosed to me as to why it was a demo. So that's something to know about, I guess. No more fancy truss rod cover on these guys. It's just blank and I like it that way. Here's what your truss rod cavity looks like there. And you have the mother of pearl Gibson crown with the Gibson logo here. I get a 1.7 inch nut width which increases to 2.08 at the 12th. At the first fret, I'm reading 0.84 inches 
which increases to 0.95 at the 12th. Now moving on to the back here, you can see it utilizes the larger styled strap buttons that you'll find on the modern series. But now the big question, PCB or hand wired? I'm finding this out the same time as you guys. Whoa, I was wondering if we might see this. Because since it doesn't have the whole direct to bridge thing and it doesn't have the in and out of phase, I was really curious if they were really gonna take the time to develop a PCB that has push pulls just for the volume pots and not there. I mean, they've done it before, but I am really impressed to see this. The SG Modern apparently gets hand wired pots or I found a very early one that just happened to get it. So orange drop caps, Gibson branded pots, all looking good here. It is a black back here. I'm not a huge fan of this because it shows all your fingerprints and smudges. You have your smudge that's always right there. And then all my other light fingerprints. The neck, it doesn't feel like a slim taper neck profile to me. It still has a little bit of a chunk to it, but that could just be due to the asymmetrical neck profile that gives that illusion to me. Back of the headstock, you've got locking Grover tuners. You lock them with these little wheels. Made in USA and serial number. It's kind of hard to read with the thick black paint. Like all the numbers are kind of disappeared except for that one zero right here. So one, 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 three, nine, zero. Looks like uh, maybe a zero, four, three. So 2019 model, 119th day of the year, first batch, and that's its production number. This particular example weighs seven pounds, 9.6 ounces. All right, I'm gonna sit down to demo this one because the neck dive is just insane on this model. But we've got neck, middle, bridge, and then you can also go through that with the coil splits. Neck pickup. Middle position. Bridge pickup. Neck pickup coil split. position, neck split. Bridge split. Both split. Bridge pickup split. So your neck pickup still kind of has that darker sound to it. It's not quite what I would consider jazzy yet. It still has quite a bit of punch to it. Then once split, it just gets even thinner. The middle position is really funky. I like it. Then with your various coil splitting options, I mean, you can get even funkier. It kind of almost has a piezo-like sound to it. You can almost say it's a little bit country. Then your bridge pickup. Then split. Over 
overall, the tones are kind of interesting to say the least. It's not quite what I normally expect from an SG. If you like the Fender S kind of tones, these coil splits get you in a similar territory. So now we'll go ahead and do some more tone comparisons. That's it for me talking.
final and most important question, would I recommend the Gibson SG Modern? This is kind of a weird one for me. When I played this at Sweetwater, I loved this thing. It was instantly so much better than any of those Vibrola ones I had. I was ready to take this home and love it. Unfortunately, now that I've got it home, I've had some time to sit down with it and really get to know it. I honestly didn't like this guitar as much. That's why I always say get real opinions from people who have owned them, not just people that sat at the store and played them for 10 minutes. You can't get to know a guitar until you've had it for a few days. I absolutely adore the specs of this thing. You've got a beautiful flame maple top. I think the clear knobs look better on this model as compared to the Les Paul Modern. Side output jack is awesome. You've got ebony fretboard. I mean, it has everything that I would love to see in an SG. But once I put this on a strap, I instantly hated this guitar. It is super neck divey. It is not comfortable to stand and play at all. So you'll have to keep that in mind when selecting a strap for this instrument. However, if you don't gig, you just sit down and play at home, you're gonna find this is very comfortable if you like SGs. I've never been a huge SG fan. The whole long looking neck is always off putting to me. So my final recommendation is yes, I do still suggest these, but only if you like SGs, right? This is definitely a very bright sounding SG. If you decide to purchase one of these, this is everything you get. You get a hard shell case with a brown exterior that says Gibson with a red interior. You've got good heel support, double neck rest, and inside here sleeps all of this case candy. So that's things like your inspected by checklist, silica packet, Gibson multi-tool. You've got your baby photo, Gibson branded strap, warranty card, owner's manual, your polishing cloth, and a little baggie to keep all this stuff in. Gibson definitely knows how to give you case candy. Thank you Troglodytes for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I think I'm done reviewing the 2019 lineup as of right now. Maybe we'll grab a few more in a few weeks, but for now, I'm kind of burnt out on this subject. So we'll just go back to our rocker knots as well as our regular review and demos of used instruments. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.